Okay, guys, um, welcome to our fourth day of the orientation. So today we're going to be looking at ICS issues. We will be covering um, different aspects of ICS. Today we're going to start off, we'll be looking at different aspects that such as we're going to be looking at what is this Moodle, how to work with Moodle. We're also going to be looking at um, issues surrounding the help desk. And then we'll also be looking at aspects of Word and Excel and then we'll also touch on the, uh, the idea of the timetable. So today we're going to be looking at a lot of these, uh, these I, I, ICS issues, um, IT terms that we use in the university. And um, we're going to be touching on a very interesting topic around the timetable. I know a lot of people have got questions around the timetable, um, the words such as stream, such as blocks, how do we work with that and so on and so forth. So I'd like to welcome you guys to um, our fourth day of the orientation at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Please sit back, relax, enjoy yourselves. If there are any questions, remember to use our chat um, chat services or the question and answer. We also have staff that are waiting in there, so hopefully they'll be able to to attend to your questions. If you don't, um, if your question has not been attended to, we also have a Q and A um, session at the end of the presentation of our orientation, so you can also ask your your questions then. Please just make sure that you've also tested your, your, your speaker so that when you are given an opportunity, you can be able to unmute yourself and speak. Otherwise, for all of those, you can just know that your, your microphones are muted. So when you've been called on to speak, please make sure you unmute your mic and you know use that um, opportunity to ask your questions. Okay, so thank you very much. Our speaker who's going to come in immediately after me is going to be um, Stavis from Konza, who's going Okay, uh, good morning, good morning everyone. Can you hear me? Wonderful, yes. okay. I think we just lost Dr. Jerry there, but that's okay. Uh, we'll proceed. Uh, he was about to introduce me. Uh, my name is Tavisom Mkwaza, the first year experience coordinator for the, uh, for the School of Management IT and Governance. I'm going to talk to you guys today about a few important tools that we use here at the institution that you need to be familiar with and also ensure that um, you, you sort of understand or you oblige with, with, with certain things I'm going to teach you. Um, and so that it becomes easier for you, um, you know, your journey here, especially uh, during your first year. So some of the things I'm going to talk about, we're going to look at email etiquette. So we're going to look at, um, once you've set up your email account, now when you start sending emails, to staff members, to your colleagues, your fellow students, how do you do it? You to your uh, sponsors for those that have bursaries, and everybody else. You know, even if you want uh, work work uh, to the employers, uh, to the those that maybe are doing pcom accounting and already have contracts. How do you communicate with professionals uh, in a manner that actually presents you in a positive light? Um, I have been receiving a lot of emails from some of you guys. And, and, and I realized that there is a common uh, challenge when it comes to uh, sending a proper email. And that's okay because it's only your first time you guys are not, uh, have not been educated as yet um, how to uh, compile a proper email. So we will start with that. And after that, we'll go on and look at um, a, another um, a, a component which where we look at uh, the Microsoft um, a, a, a sort of Excel and Microsoft Word, uh, just to give you some tips in terms of how to operate and how to use uh, those tools effectively and how to ensure that you also shield yourself against things such as load shedding. You don't end up losing all your work. You don't end up having to start from scratch, maybe whilst you were just about to finish. So now I'll start with an email. Here I've compiled a nice document for you guys so that you can um, just get to see what will be on your screen, especially once you've set up our UKZN email account. We are aware that uh, some of you are still are struggling to set up your accounts because your LAN passwords are not set up as yet. And I have been communicating with you also via email to say, you can email uh, IT student help at ukzn.ac.za if perhaps you are struggling to set up your password because your password will help you access your emails. It will help you access your, 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 your learn at UKZN. 
uh, which is a platform where you will find your modules, you will find content about all the modules that you'll be doing uh, this semester. So this is quite an important process or important phase for you guys. And you need to make sure that you, 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 you have set up your password so that you can start. As we all know that lectures are expected to commence on the 13th of February, unless anything changes. But in the meantime, that is our sort of a uh, expected uh, date uh, for, for the commencement of lectures. Uh, so let's start and look at my screen here. Um, so this is what you, you will see when you click on your emails and you say create new email, or you click the new email button and this will pop up for you guys. And you will now uh, have to type in certain things so that your email uh, can, can have all the components that is that are required so that you can send it to, to the person you want to communicate with. Um, so the first thing that you need to understand is that as a UKZN student, you need to only send emails through your student email. Once your, once your student email is set up, you can only send your emails through your student email. Don't send it via your Gmail account and don't send it via your Outlook, your Hotmail, your Yahoo, and all the email addresses that you created for your personal uh, use. You need to comply and use the UKZN email address. That's the first important point. So when you're emailing staff members, such as administrators, lecturers, tutors, coordinators, mentors, everyone, the communication has to be formal. Why is this important? It will help you. Let's say, for instance, you, you sent an email and you're not getting a response and you want to take that out, that query up with someone, uh, you can be able to share that, okay, I emailed you on this date and I still haven't gotten a response. So I am following up on this particular issue. And the individual probably, the email could, could have gone to spam, could have, have been missed uh, for some particular reason. They can just go back and check the history of the conversation and be able to assist you. So it is important for you to ensure that you use uh, the proper email address. The second thing that is important um, with regards to this is that if you use your personal uh, Gmail account, when it comes to me, it will probably be marked as a spam or it will be marked as a sort of, a, a, yeah, it's either a spam. So meaning that I, I would be worried, I'll think that, okay, maybe this is not a, an approved email address and I'll probably not see your email. So there's something that we call Mimecast that blocks all the emails because as an institution, we've had, we have been having issues with hackers and, and people trying to uh, imitate university staff and trying to extort us for, for certain information or money and all those kind of things and, and, data, and information as well or our personal data. So now we are all very careful and very skeptical to look at emails that are not formally UKZN email addresses. All right, so the second thing that you need to do is to jump, double check the email address. So when you're typing an email address, please ensure that the email address is correct. Uh, if you, you misspell the email address, the email will not go through. And you will think that I've submitted my acceptance of an offer and no one is responding. Uh, but you will find that you probably messed up the email address and what you, you, you know, the, the email actually bounced, you know, or you, in, in, instead of Mkonza S, you said Mkonza T. Maybe there is another Mkonza T who works for a different college and that Mkonza T will see the email and be and think, why do I, why am I getting email addresses from students that I don't even know? Let's say maybe it's someone who works with CMS, our cleaning services, and they will, they will probably be shocked. Why am I getting emails from students? Uh, simply because you made an error when you were typing your email address. So you need to ensure that it's spelled correctly uh, and you only, um, and, and, and the, 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 the recipient or the person that you're sending it to is the correct individual. <clears throat> Secondly, you should not copy uh, anybody unnecessarily. So there's, there's these two options here. So you have your two, which is the person that you're sending it to. You have <clears throat> your CC, which is someone that you would like to copy so that they can see the email. And you have BCC, someone you have to blind copy. So basically this person only received the email, but they don't see 
who the ima which, which or who was the uh, original recipient uh, recipient of the email, meaning that <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> who is the person that this email is actually directed to. So when it comes to that person, it would come as a blind copy. And you find that the person who received this email who's blind copied has no business in the issue that is being discussed on the email. And all they can do is probably just maybe correct you and say you've made an error or even ignore it. And you will wonder why are you not getting uh, responses? The Another important thing that you need to understand is that you need to ensure that um, I'm going to jump, go to this, and then I'll come back to, to the actual content of the email. Um, I, I'm going to talk about the subject line. Uh, I've, I'm getting a lot of emails that have no subject line, which is obviously makes everything difficult. And you find that even within the content of the email, you do not understand what the student is, is, is trying to say. So let's say, for instance, the student emails you and say, and say, could you kindly assist me? I have a problem. And that's all your financial issue. Uh, is it um, a data issue? Is it a registration query? Is it so you, you really don't know how to help? And then you end up sending a follow-up email saying, uh, please give me your details. And uh, please uh, sort, of, uh, sort of highlight what issue are you having. So um, please ensure that you, you enter a subject line here that is clear and concise. It needs to be short and straight to the point. I'll make an example, follow up on my application. That's all you need if you're following up on your application. Follow up, follow up on my NSFAS status. Uh, so just try to be short and sweet and clear and concise when you are uh, sending that email through. And then the next part of your email address that you need to have, you can't just send something that has no uh, a greeting. You know, um, you know, you're going to be a professional uh, sooner or later. So you really need to get familiarized with this process. So you need to address a person properly. So if you know that the person is a prof or is a doctor or is a mister or is a miss, you say, dear Mr. Mkonza, um, and then you continue with what you're saying. Or you say, dear Dr. Jerry, and then you continue with what you want to say. Or dear Prof Mkize, and you continue with what you want to say. And please do not assume that um, a woman is a missus. That's another issue that you find a lot. Um, and, and I know that in, in high school, everyone is a mem there. So everyone is a mem, 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 mem. But here, you cannot assume. If you don't know whether an individual is married or not, just say, just call them by name, dear Tabiso. Um, so uh, the, the, the good thing about entering our UKZ and email address up here, when you enter the email address, it will give you the, the name of the person. It will change itself and say, Tabiso Sponello Konza. Then you realize, oh, this is Tabiso. Then you say, dear Tabiso, because you don't know whether Tabiso is a, lay, is a male or a female. And you also might not know whether Tabiso, uh, if, 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 if he is a lady or she, if she is a lady, you don't know whether she's married or not. So please be careful of all, all of, of those things as well. And then let's continue now and look at the body. So the first thing that we, you need to understand is that when you are actually writing your now your body of your email or the contents of your email, you need to use appropriate spelling and grammar. Remember, all of you passed uh, English and you have uh, you met the minimum requirements for English, meaning that you know how to communicate with basic English language. If you're still struggling a little bit, it's okay, especially if you see that oh. Uh, it's Tabiso. You can send email in Isizulu. You know UKZN embraces the language. Uh, so you can send your email in Isizulu. I I've had students sending me emails in Isizulu uh, just to make sure that they better explain themselves and they get all the full context of what they are trying to communicate. And actually, it makes things easy. You know, instead of trying to put one or two words together and and your 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 email ends up lo losing context and i don't know what's going on so please ensure that you you actually use appropriate spelling and grammar so once you've typed your email out read it don't just send it 
read it first. I'm sure your, your high school teachers were always telling you about proofreading. You need to proofread everything that you're saying because one small word can actually change the entire context of the email and the content that you're trying to send. And also, uh, uh, stay away from WhatsApp uh, language. So, you know, the who's it, hey, uh, you know, there's an individual who sends me an email using, you know, all those, um, you know, where, where instead of maybe using an A, they use a V, and, and I, I really didn't know what was happening. So uh, instead of saying Tabiso using an A, they will use a V. And I say, oh, wow, this person is clearly trying to charm me, but I am not charmed. I'm actually offended because this student has actually met the minimum requirements of being at our institution. So now I'm disappointed. Uh, you know, as a lecturer also, you look at your student and you get worried. You know, because now this student still has to write uh, type assignments, they still have to submit, write uh, tests, and you wonder if they're going to be using that language, because that will actually award them a mark of zero. So please, please stay away from those habits. Um, okay. And also, please uh, take um, a, 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 a clear or take a notice to how you actually phrase your email. You don't use uh, capital letters only. I'm sure we've been taught that from grade one, you know, where do you put the capital letters? Where do you put kept the small letters? University, nothing has changed. Now you don't need to be fancy and try to charm me. No, you need to use the language that you were taught. All right. And um, <clears throat> going further in your email now, here's another thing that is important. No matter how frustrated you are, be polite, be respectful. A one of our key um, sort of um, uh, virtues here at UKZN is respect. We, everybody is expected to be respectful, either a staff member or our students. So when you come into the university, you are also uh, signing into that contract. No matter how much you've been trying to get assistance and you haven't been receiving it, there's no need for you to be rude. Um, you just need to still be polite and considerate. By considerate, we mean when you send an email, don't expect to be responded to now. Remember, there is about 40 um, or let's say maybe 1,500 uh, first year students at UKZN and probably the lecturer is lecturing all these first years because maybe Economics 101 might be um, taught in different uh, qualifications. So it is important for you to be considerate and understand that the staff member also have other queries that they are attending to, and they will respond once they get into to your query. All right, so in your email now, let's, let's talk about the actual content of the email. <clears throat> Here is another thing that's always missing, especially if you, you are asking for help uh, with a certain thing. You can't just say, please help me. I am not, I'm unable to set up my email address and leave it there. And you need to say which pro, uh, qualification are you coming from? We need to know which module are you doing? We need to know um, what is your student number? So your student number is important. That's how you are identified. Your name and surname, it's, it's difficult to identify you because a lot of students might be using the same name, uh, um, I mean, the same name as you and the same surname. So you might find that there's Tabisom Konza, who's also in health sciences, there's Tavisom Konza who's in medical school. So really your name is not an, 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 an appropriate way to identify you. So your student number is the only thing that's unique that we know for certain that um, you know, no one else has it. So, but you still need to insert your name, your student number, and you, you tell us what is your module. In my case, you can tell me what is your qualification and you say, I hope you can assist me. And then you explain your problem. Okay, so now you need, once you identify, you need to identify why are you writing to the person and how they are expected to assist you. So before you even uh, send through your query, you need to think, okay, you can't just say to, to, you can't just come and say, I'm so stressed out and leave it there. You know, you say, I would like to have some counseling. I would like to uh, have some mental address my issue and, and all of that. So 
it shows that, okay, you know exactly how you want, because there's a lot of ways I can help you. So it's better if you narrow it down and say, this is my query, can you hand, could you kindly assist me in this way? So that the, the help that you're provided is actually in line with what you're expecting. Okay, um, if you're sending an email outside of business hours, you should not expect an immediate reply. So if you're sending an email on a Sunday or you're sending it uh, after, five, or after 4 p.m., let's say you were asked to send your documents at 9 a.m. and you, only were, you, are, you were only able to send your documents at half past three. Obviously, that email, because you, you find that the staff member, although is still in front of their computer, but they are, they, they are already addressing emails that are already in the inbox. So they will go to a certain email once the time for them to knock off comes then they will stop and they will attend to your emails the next morning so uh if it's outside the the business hours don't expect the, the reply on the same day or immediately staff members are not working 24 hours so you need to allow for at least a 24 hour turnaround meaning that the next day you wait if you're still not getting a reply then you send a follow-up when you're sending follow-ups don't send a new email reply on your original email and say, DSA or DS Tabiso, I would like to kindly follow up on my query below. Then Tabiso will see that and then they'll jump and see the query and then they'll respond. There's no need for you to send a, another second email where you say, I would like to follow up on my email, but there's still no message here that, can, that actually tells me what was your query. Once now uh, you are done with that part, then you need to do your sign off. Please let me know if you need any further information. Thank you for your assistance, kind regards. Then you insert your name. Okay, so this is the email etiquette or the standards that we expect here at GKZN. Remember, you are here to be trained to be an exceptional professional. You cannot just um, use those uh, informal languages. Uh, when you are communicating with the staff members, because this is the beginning of your initiation. Every little thing is preparing you to be an excellent professional. So this is why we emphasize on these uh, things. So I'm going to now rush through and do quickly the, the, the Excel and just give you a few tips. So I'm going to share my screen again and show you. I was looking at the documents for other pro proceedings. Let's start with um, Microsoft Word. So this is your assignment. Let's assume this is your assignment. This is basic. Uh, this is actually today's program uh, or the program for the week. But let's assume that it's a it's it's your uh, assignment now. So when you are working on it on a document like this, before you even type anything, you need to say to go here and log in with your account. So but which account do you use? You use your student account. So you can log in and use your student email address and insert your password. Uh, I know some of you are still about to set those uh, passwords, it's fine. But once it's ready, every time you use this document, log in, how is this going to help you? Uh, for instance, I've, I've not logged in with, with my personal a, a email address, but you see here on, on this side of things, there is a document that I was working on, a, on the, um, probably I opened it maybe on Monday and it's still here. Meaning that, you know, even if I have lost the document, I did not save it, I can still click here and it will shift and go into that document. So that is why it is important for you to log in and actually um, uh, work whilst you are logged in on Word. The second thing that you need to do is to ensure that, um, now the personal information is gonna appear, sorry about that. Another thing that you need to ensure that you do is to just look at the home screen here. So you click on home, then it will give you options here. So this is where you change your font. When you're writing an assignment, you are told that your font is this, uh, this is the um, font size that you need to use, the spacing that you need to use, you can check here. Uh, you know, the, you, if you want to make the, maybe it's a, a heading, you want to make it bold, it's italics, you want to underline, and all those things are available here as your tools. You don't need to be used, uh, doing the old fashioned way like you were doing in high school where you had your ruler in your hand 
and you're underlining everything word for word. Now, everything is easier. So uh, you can do it using technology. And then another thing that is important is to save your work. So when you click on file, it will give you an option to be able to save your work. It is extremely important that your work is saved, especially during these days of load shedding where the electricity um, or the power can just run out and you, you, you lose everything. So you must log in first in the document. And in addition to that, uh, save the work whilst you are working on it. So maybe write one paragraph, save. Another paragraph, save. Another paragraph, save. So that even if you do get cut off, you, you know, you can save the document here. Um, I'm going to click on this save as option because I want to, 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 to sort of uh, show you something. So let's say now you are working on a web document, but you want to change it into PDF. I think that's another important thing um, that, you, that, that you need to know how to do. So if you want to, to save it as a, as a PDF, you, you go here, you change the formats of the document and you say PDF here, here's an option. So then once you click here, the document will change and be saved as PDFs, although it was a Word, a Word document initially. So that is another thing that is important. So let's say for instance, uh, you were trying to compile a document together. Maybe it's an ID, you took pictures, you don't have a scanner. You can insert those pictures in the Word document here, and then you can just save as a, way, as, as a PDF, and then it will become a PDF document. So those are some of the shortcuts that you learn as you proceed here at university. So these are the main important things. And also remember, uh, you don't abandon the, the teachings from high school. You're still using the appropriate um, a, a, a sort of style for writing. We still need to see full stops. We still need to see headings. We still need to see a, a sort of a question marks and all those things. Even though you're writing an assignment and now you're using a laptop or a computer, you still need to stick to the language rules or the, the, the language, the, the styles that you were taught in high school on how to write either an essay and, and so on and so forth. And now I'm going to stop sharing this and jump straight into uh, the, the Excel document and just show you a little bit what does it look like. So here's an Excel document. An Excel document is also important uh, because um, you know, you go, you're probably going to be expected to work with this a little bit on first year and in, in, in modules such as your ISTN, which is uh, your IT uh, or information technology module. Uh, you will still be expected to use this. And also it's the same here. You need to log in on the document first so that you do not lose your work. I still have the work that I did um, on the sixth here that I can click on and look at. Even if I can't find my document, maybe I saved it or I thought I saved it, but I can't find it anymore. I can still click on it and find it. So those, these are the smart ways of in making sure that you don't lose your work. Um, you need to look in on the document and also remember to say, similar to Word, there is also a, a, a sort of home button where you can change a lot of things here. And uh, this you will be taught more obviously in your IS, uh, ISNT module, and it's going to uh, help you a lot uh, going forward here and making sure that you are successful here at, at the institution. So um, I think this brings uh, the end to my presentation. And like I said, remember the tips that I, that I taught you. So from now on, from, from all the emails that, we, that will be coming through, I'll be expecting a certain structure, certain level of competence because we are starting now. We don't have to wait for the 13th. You are already being inducted. You're already being trained into fantastic uh, professionals. And thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, I'm konzas at gkzn.ac.za and I'm still gonna put my email address on the chat, but thank you very much. Over to you, uh, Dr. Jerry. Thank you very much, um, Stavisa, for that um, brief around Word and Excel. And um, our next speaker is going to be uh, Pekeko, and she'll be talking about an issue that is, I think, very relevant to a lot of us. A lot of us have been wanting to, to uh, had a lot of questions around the logins and so on. and so. 
hopefully uh, Patrick will be able to clear that up and she'll also be um, having a small word around um, a, a tool that we use, a learning management system that we use in the university called Moodle. So Katero, Petero, over to you. Morning, everyone. I, ha I hope everyone is good and thank you for actually joining us up until this day. Um, actually, my main thing is to address the main concern that everyone has been facing regarding the login password. So most of you have been asking what's actually this learn password that is actually making our life hectic and all those things. So I'll try by all means to demonstrate and I would want you guys to actually follow so that whenever you encounter anything, you can put it on the chat so that we address it. Because for me to actually move forward to model and how to actually log into your email um, email address that uh, actually Stavis was talking about, you actually need this land password. So this is the actually the core of everything that we'll be doing today. So I need you to actually follow me when I'm trying to de demonstrate so that whenever you encounter issue and then we can address them now. All right, um, I'll start sharing the screen of changing password. I think this is where we start. So here, when you're changing the password, I think they've been sending it through uh, throughout on how to actually change that. Mm, okay, this is where you go online because we're going to use the online service, uh, self-service website so that you can actually do it from your side. Let me know if you can see my screen because I'm not sure which one is sharing right now. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. So here, this is where we're going to start. Uh, most of you, I think you got stuck here. They told you that you need to use, uh, let me start sharing the first, the first year one when you, you're still new at the university. Let me stop and share this one so that I can manually take you through it so that you know which one you fall under. Okay, I think it still shows the same one. Okay, I'll just read it out because I can't share both of them at the same time. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so here, what's going to happen is that we're going to, you're going to use your student account. So you can, okay, here is your student number. My student number is 215-029-233. And then it's add stu. But for most of you, it's, it's add stu.ukzn dot ac dot za and then the old password i think this is where you need to use your 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 what do we call this your 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 date of birth and all those things that they actually told you on the groups so it's your password it's actually it's two dot it's two at ukzrn it's two with on my side, the thing is that it's not going to allow because I already have the password and I'm already registered and everything. So on your side, it, it, it's it's going to be a bit different. But your password is uh, stu add, and then you put your your date of birth. Your your date of birth is in the order of date, month, and year. That's the one you need to do. That's the old one. And then to create a new password. You need to take. You need to check this one. This uh, this is this is what what's happening here. So it's a minimum of one lowercase letter, which is any lowercase, and then a minimum of one upper, and then one minimum of numeric character. It can it can be from zero to nine, and then a minimum of one special character. Special character is add hashtag dollar and star and percentage, any of those exclamation mark, those are the special characters that they usually, um, re that they refer to. And then do not share your password with anyone else because this is gonna be more like your ID password, your ID or your PIN, your, your account PIN. I mean, say your bank account PIN. So you shouldn't share it with anyone because they, they will have access to your marks. They will have access to everything that's happening regarding your, in, um, regarding your academics. 
So you shouldn't share it with anyone. That's why I wouldn't ask you, what, what are you putting here? But please write it down so that you won't forget it uh, the following day. So I think, okay, I think uh, you can show me by, and then you're gonna submit. And then the new password that you actually created here from all these characters, you need to confirm the very same password and then submit. So is there anyone who's winning or someone who is actually, uh, who was able to, cre to create it? You can just give me a thumb. Okay, I think we are winning now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for those who are still struggling, I guess we will actually uh, solve it later on on the groups. But as long as I have people who are actually following, uh, it's just a matter of saying your student number, yours is going to be 223 something, 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 at stu.ukzn.ac.za. And then the old password is the one that I mentioned that it's stu at your date of birth, which start with uh, your date, month, and year. And then after that, you're gonna create a new password, which is the characters that I mentioned. And then it needs to be at least eight characters. Yes, it's the eight characters. So if it's less, obviously it's gonna keep on saying error, need to try again. So, but at least make sure that it's eight characters with all these uh, things that I mentioned here and you don't need to share. And then confirming new password, you're confirming the very same one. You don't need to create a new one again here. You, you take the very same password and then you put it here and then you write it somewhere, you submit, and then we can move on. I see that most of you are winning. Okay, I'll go back to, to the actual thing of logging in. Okay, I see that my video has frozen. Okay, I'll just switch it off so that it doesn't distract us. Um, okay, I'll, I'm moving on to how to, to get your, your outlook, because, uh, Mr. Mkonza Stavuso actually showed us how to, uh, to how to write your email and everything, but how do we actually get to that outlook before we can even write the email? So this is how you're gonna go about it. You go to your, if you're using um, Android, you can go to Android. What do they call it? Uh, it's um, it's Google app or something. What? Play Store, you go to your Play Store and then you actually, <laughs> I know the struggle between Android and Apple, but we're not there. So you go to Google Store, not Google Store, Play Store, and then you, you, you actually download Outlook email app. So after that, it's gonna install. So from that installation, that's when you'll be able to have the, the Outlook. And then you go to UKZN um, student web page where you click on student email. So let me take you through that instead of me actually telling you all this. So this is how we actually go about it. Let me switch up this one and go to, okay. I'm not sure, okay, I think you can see this one. Okay, let me share. So this is how we actually go about it. You go to UKZN page, which is UKZN, you just go to UKZN and then it will take you to uh, UKZN.ac.za, that's our official web page. You can see my screen, right? Um, okay. Why is it taking forever to load? Okay, this is where you are. So from here, you're gonna go to, uh, this is our home page where you get everything that, uh, concerns the, the UK university. So you're gonna go to student portal where you're gonna get all the details. Okay, so it's on the student side. We can see changes, okay. Let's see student email. Why is it taking us back to this one? Okay, I'll just move from this one and say, uh, go to UKZN student email. And then 
it's my UK, and then it's gonna, but even from UKZN web, web page, you can get it. So it's my UKZN, which is my UKZN, and then you go to log in. Okay, from my side, since I'm already logged in, it takes me straight to this one, but let me try to log off so that I can show you how to go about it. Yeah, my laptop is just way too slow. Okay, let's wait for it until... Okay. Okay, I'm gonna sign out and sign in again so that you can follow. Okay. Taking his time, you signed out your account, okay? So now we'll need to sign in again. Where you just sign in. And then it's, it's gonna, okay, already it saved my details, but um, you're gonna put in your 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 pass your 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 username. Your username is gonna be your student number at stu.ukzn.ac.za. The very same account that we were creating from that from uh, the land password. So that land password you're gonna use it here. So it's your student number at stu.ukzn.ac.za, and then your password. Your password is the one that you created where you say new password and confirm new password. This is the password that you put in. And then you say sign in. Okay, yes, I want to say sign in so that I, I don't need to put on the password every time whenever I want to log in. So welcome to 365. And which is, uh, and then it's going to say your name because I, uh, I, I actually use my credit, my credentials. So yeah, this is how you go in. And then for you to see your emails, you go to Outlook. So, but for those who actually already created the the Outlook from, um, from your phone, it's going to lead you straight to here. So this is all the emails that I received. So the focused one is the one that are directed to me. And then the other is the ones that um, it's usually the communique from the university. Maybe if there's a general email that is coming in. So you see share, these are university notices, university notices. So these are the, gener the general emails that I get into everyone but the focus one is the ones that are coming straight to me to my to my email address and then um after sending an email uh mr mkonza already showed you how to actually create an email after sending an email you go to send and send items to confirm that you already actually um you you've already sent the the, the email because sometimes you can say that you have sent the email but only to find it in here so this is the, if you find it on the drafts, it means that you the email have, hasn't been uh, sent. So you go back to to it, and then you actually edit, and then you you press send, and then deleted items, um, other folders. This is where the junk emails the junk emails are the ones that he actually referred to when you, your email can actually come to us. The the system will detect it as a, as a junk or as a spam. So this is where you'll actually find all the spam emails. And then, yeah, that's it. That's it about the, the about our outlook. And this is where actually all the formal communications will be taking place. And then let's go, let's move from email and then use our LEN password again on our Moodle. Our Moodle page for this year, it's LEN 2023. It's learn2023.ukzn.ac.za. So if you want to check your, your, your Moodle page, you go to this to, to decide learn2023.ukzn.ac.za. So, and then you're gonna log in. So for me, I'll use, for me to be able to demonstrate, I'll use the 2021, because that's where there are, there are modules that I can actually show you what's happening here. So, but it's the same for for on your side, focus on LEN 2023, but the login details and everything is the same. Just that for me to, 
be to show you on how what's actually happening inside the model. I need to use this one because it has uh, familiar modules to you guys. So here you it's gonna show it's 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 a username username. This oh this one is kind it's slightly different because you don't say at stu.ukism.za. Here you just put your student number. It's just your student number. And then the password is the same password that you created on the LAN password. This is your LAN password. But here, this, the difference is that you just, you don't add, add stu.ukzn.z.a. So yeah, that's the difference. And then you log in. So for you to know that you have been logged in, it's going to uh, state your name and your surname. So here it means that I'm logged in. And then here we have the home page, um, my UKZN mobile app. I've seen that most of you already downloaded this one. It's actually also good. And then if you want to have the Moodle on your phone, you can also download this one so that you can just check your 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 thing your 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 modules anytime anywhere without you actually going to browse it because here you can see that I'm actually on the browse side where I can actually check it and then yeah these are all the generic details what you need to focus on right now is my my courses if you click on this one this is where all the modules that you've registered for will appear but I'm aware that not all the modules are appearing right now. Some lecturers will actually upload them Friday. Some will upload them maybe Monday. So it depends on the specific lecturer. Not all of them will show will be shown by now, but at least some of them, I believe that they're already there. So here, if you want to check the details concerning the, the, the economics 1CO, you're going to click on the economics one CO. This is what actually happens or uh, appears on your on your model page. So here is the general, the welcome notes on hi, how I congratulations, you've made it and everything. And then it's just the, like they welcome you to this module. They tell you uh, a brief about the module on what is the objective of this course is to give you is to give you a basic insight into what microeconomics is all about. And then they show you everything all, all like the basic or the summary of the module. And then uh, all necessary resources and uh, are made available to you, e.g. lecture slides. This is what you should expect on the model page or for your course. It's the, they, they actually post the lecture slides, the tutorials, test and exam content. So everything that regarding your, that module will also will actually be posted here and other follow-ups like notification and everything will go to your emails. Please uh, note these examples uh, to give you an indication of the format that you, uh, and what to expect. So that's actually that. And then please check your UKZN emails and Moodle page every day for any new information pertaining to the course. In particular, ensure that you know your test dates, which are important because you can't come and say, I didn't know that I was writing. I didn't know that I had a test. Times and uh, contribution weights. So this one is actually to show you that maybe for test one, how long uh, or what's the weight for test one? How much is it contributing to your, towards your DP? The DP is what we actually spoke about the other day saying that it's the Julie um, performance certificate that you need in order to qualify for the exam. So the, and yeah, to the final mark, okay, you are responsible for your own learning and must therefore ensure you are in the right place at the right time. So you can be saying that, uh, I know that we are writing test, test one today, but then instead of going to J block room 029, you go to T block, go uh, T1. So, you see, it's your responsible to it's your responsibility to know your venue, your test, and which test are you writing, and what time are you writing. So, but don't worry; those are the details that they they will actually communicate um, almost every now and then until the day. So you'll get the notifications and everything regarding that. So don't worry about that. It's not like you need to check now and then. You'll only get to know the day you go to you go to the venue they will actually keep on reminding you and everything but it's your responsibility responsibility to check your notification so yeah here they tell you who's your course lecturer here it was it was dr sangweni 
from Westville, and then they also show you their office number so that when during consultation times you can actually go to the lecturer's thing, lecturer's um, office, and then the tell number. If maybe you get stuck, the email that you can actually um, email your, your lecturer concerning the module and everything. And then here, this one is the it's where the announcements comes in. Announcements, they that's where they remind you of your test and anything regarding maybe if the venue has changed to from T1 to M2 or from M2 to G5. So this is where the announcements will be made. That's why they emphasize that you need to at least check in the morning and in the evening so that you know what's going to happen during the day. And then yeah, new tutorial groups here, I guess they changed the, the tutorial because they, they initially they had the tutorials, but then they had to change the groups. So here they will announce that there are new tutorial groups that you need to join. They will give you here, they attach the list. So you need to check which group you belong to. And then here, these are these are your, 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 your tutors. So you need to check from group three, they know that their tutor is Petal Magaling and then um, how do they go about joining Petal Magalins group? So this is just the general announcements that will actually happen now and then so that you are aware of what's happening regarding that module. And yeah, there are a lot of reminder for today's revision. You see, they don't, they, it's not like as far as we're saying it's your responsibility, but we don't mean that we're going to leave you until the last day and then say you didn't check. And then the most important thing that you need to look out for is your course outline. Your, co your course outline, it actually gives you everything that you need regarding the module. Who's your lecturer? Prescribed textbook. Uh, most of you have been asking, when are you getting the list? This is where you get the, 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 the prescribed textbook that you need for the, specific, for the specific module. So for this one, this is the textbook that they needed. And these are the additional reading texts which are recommended. And it means that they are actually interlinked with the textbook that is recommended. So these ones you can download, it's either you can download them from the, your library, you can download them from Google Scholar or, or anywhere. But these are just the extra, extra reading that you need to uh, be aware of. But the main textbook is this one. It's gonna be written prescribed textbook. So that's the one you're gonna, check and then lectures, tutorial and consultation hours. Each and every module will have the lecture times, tutorial times and consultation times. So, and regarding the tutorials and attendance of lectures, it depends. Some modules, they actually emphasize that it's compulsory for you to attend all the lecture, uh, to attend 80% of the lectures for you to qualify to, for the exam. Some they say in that tutorials actually contribute towards your DP. So maybe you'll find that tutorial attendance is it maybe contributes 10% towards your T, your DP. So if you'd never attended, it means that you're losing a free 10% that do that what might might have boosted your, your, your final mark. So that's that. And then here lectures are actually happening on Tuesday. They tell you the period, is it period eight and nine, and then the time. And then here, instead of the Zoom link, if it's still online, they will show you, they, they will insert the Zoom link. And then if it's a venue, they will tell you that it's actually JBlock 024 or JBlock 8 or L9. So this is where they'll put the venue, but they'll tell those definitely tell you the correct times and the period. And yeah, and then the tutorial times, there are slots that you need to attend here. Uh, for, for all BCom Foundation groups, they had to attend uh, for period five and six. But for uh, B admin, they had to attend from period six and seven. So you need to be aware where, where are you located and what time do you have, have to attend. And then the Friday one, it's everyone. And then um, here, consultation time or consult, consultation hours. This is the time where you can actually, if you have any issues regarding the concept that the content that was discussed, you can actually go to your lecturer and during this time only. So you can go there around 10 and be like, are you available? This is the, this, this is the time where they actually put everything aside and then uh, dedicate that time for you to actually come and ask any question or any query that you might have regarding the module. 
So, so yeah, this is where all this comes in. And then a register will be circulated in both lectures and tutorials to keep a record of your attendance. So each and every uh, tutorial, whenever you attend a tutorial, you need to ensure that you, you actually um, sign the register so that they can actually check if you attended. And then uh, it is your responsibility to make sure you sign. No signature, it means that you didn't attend. So if let's say you get to the tutorial and then you sit there for five minutes and then later on you decide to leave, it means that it, it's more like you never pitched up because you never signed anything. And I don't think uh, most of the time the register actually it's signed at the end of the session so that you can actually get all the information that is needed regarding the, the session. So this is where the signing comes in and then student assessments. This is your test, how they're going to assess you, the assignments, the test and all the assessment they're going to make uh, during the semester. And then so here they say students are required to write three tests which are all compulsory. So you need to check all those fine details so that you don't write only one test and later on say, hey, I didn't know that I need to write all the tests. So all, check all the fine details regarding um, your, your test and everything. So test one schedule, it says that test one, it will be written, uh, it's going to cover chapter one up until chapter four. And then they tell you all the fine details that you need to know regarding your, your, your test. And then the exam schedules, how much uh, I, 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 class mark, class mark is the DP that we, we're actually talking about. The class mark is weighted 50% of your final mark. So everything that happened throughout the semester is going to contribute 50%. And then the examination is going to contribute 50% on the side. So it means that after that, they're going to combine the 50-50, which makes 100%. And then a student actually needs the final mark of 50%. But remember, we said that you can actually aim for 50 because if you got 49, that's a total fail. So rather aim higher so that you don't get disappointed. And then, so yeah, it's just that lecture topics, they will tell you which topic will be covered. Um, so yeah, it's just that and okay, yeah. So that's basically that all for all your modules, this is the information you're gonna find in your course outline, which is very important to check before you can even proceed so that you can manage your time wisely. You know, for economics 101, I'm writing on the five on the 5th of March, and then economics um accounting 101, I'm writing on the Fifth, so that you can have your own timetable posted on your wall. So that will actually be a cons consistent reminder of what's actually happening with your academics. Okay, this one, they have a timetable because it's the foundation program. Foundation program, they actually create a timetable for them. But for you, it's a different story, which uh, Dr. Jerry will cover because you have blocks. So these are the tests. These ones, they were writing quizzes. I'm not sure if, if, if you guys will still write quizzes, but this is how it shows on your, on your things, your quiz. So it gonna, you're just going to click on the quiz, and then it's going to have your start button. This one is not going to show all those details because it, the test has already passed. And here, I wasn't registered as a student because I was, I was a tutor. So yeah, it's gonna be this, and the test will actually tell you all the details. It's 20 MCQ per student, two attempts, and two attempts can be tricky because you'll think maybe you're gonna write it now and then cram the question and then come back later. That's not the case. Most of the time they change, when you do the second attempt, it's a completely new questions. So, and then after that, they're gonna take the highest grade uh, from the, those two, two, two attempts. So let's say the first one you attempted and you got 9%. And then the second one, maybe you get, oh, maybe the first one you get lucky, you get 90%. And you feel like, no, I can get 100 if I do second attempt. And then second attempt, you get nine. They're going to take the two, combine them together and give you the average of the two. So it, it's, it might be tricky, but I'm not sure if it's still online. And then uh, they tell you everything, how much it contributes and everything. So that's it from the mural page. Yeah, those are the details I think that you need to learn. And then from mural, I think Shelly yesterday did mention that actually mural is the friendliest 
app that you can use. Because from Moodle, if you maybe you see something and then you want to go to your emails, you can just click here, go to UKZN email, and it's gonna take you directly to your to your Outlook. So you don't need to actually log out and go everywhere because like I said, the learning password actually is the main thing that will take you everywhere. So you can just move around from Moodle to, to your UKZN and then from Moodle, let's say maybe uh, they told you that your, your additional um, information or resources that you need, it's uh, an, a, a journal from someone else. You can just click here, go to library and then from library, it actually you that's where you can actually from here you take the whatever that's prescribed or whatever that's recommended, and then you go to your library page, and then it's going to show you everything that's needed there, and then you download your, your document. And even from here, let's say there's an assignment that you need to uh, submit. So oh, okay, this is the library where you can download the ebooks, the journal, the journals, and go to Google Scholar so that you can get um right sources so it's just that so Moodle actually is a smart app that you that actually makes life student um, students life easy and then here turn it in turn it in it's remember we talked about plagiarism so turn it in it's where you actually go to so that you can check your plagiarism let's say there's an assignment where you write you need to write your essay so even on turn it in you go to log in and then you use the very same land password that you created. So you see the importance of land password that, and why we're saying you shouldn't share it. So here is the student number at stu.ukzn.ac.za. And then the very same password that you created is the same one that you're going to put here. And then you log in. And then here, um, the, your, your lecturer is going to give you or it's going to give you what you need to enroll in a class and then after that you they're going to show you on how to actually go about checking your 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 similarities if you actually plagiarized or okay uh, let me see how let, let me see if there's anyone open so that i can okay <coughs> okay yeah so here is the similarities so i think the accepted similarity is about it's up to 15%, my colleagues can co uh, correct me. I think here, they only allow up until 50%, 15%. After that, it means that you actually, you are, you are in danger. So you need to make sure that it actually falls within 15%, but it depends on the module. They will tell you the, ex the exact um, percentage that they need for assignment. So here, how the similarities work, I'll show you how, how to check if um, maybe can you we wind up. I think we've got five minutes remaining now for the next speaker. Oh, okay. I think uh, yeah, we're completing. So okay. So the the, the similarity ones are gonna be highlighted like this so that you can check which which one is actually which one do you need to fix so that your similarity falls within the, the recommended. So that's that's more like it from the from the Moodle page. So the Moodle page actually summarizes everything, almost everything that you need as a student. And I think I've covered almost everything regarding Moodle. Let me see. Yeah, I think I've covered everything regarding this. And then, yeah, I think that's it from me. My colleagues can take over. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Petleo. I think um, a lot of these, uh, you, you guys will get to learn as you go on. What is very important that she has actually also um, talked about is you need to know where your communication happens. Most of your communication is going to happen on Moodle. So you need to be familiar with the site. You need to also be familiar that announcements for your class, things like timetables, you also get them from your Moodle site. So guys, please make sure you know, you go on to this site, um, the Learn 2023 now at ukzn.ac.za and make yourself familiar. And also from what Petloko has brought out, which is very important, is that make sure you do not share your, your login details. Okay. Our next speaker that's going to come up is now Mr. Zulu, who's going to be speaking about the help desk. Mr. Zulu, over to you. Okay. Good morning, guys. Um, thanks very much, Dr. Chair. Um, 
I'm Simang Aliso Bayabong Azulu, the FYE coordinator um, in the foundation program. So um, I'm just going to quickly take you through um, the student um, help desk or student support, which is the division or uh, the department um, that is situated in the information and communication center. So these are basic um, things that you guys need to know so that you can be able to resolve any IT related issues that you are facing right now and that you're also going to face in the near future. So in the university, um, we've got um, five campuses, as you are now aware, and each campus is located with uh, the student help desk. So this is a walk-in facility that um, will assist you should you have any query that is related with issues on how to set up your password, uh, how to retrieve your PIN, and so on. So we've got um, the ICS student call center, uh, the, uh, the telephonic support number, which is 031 to 64,000. Uh, you can call them at uh, between eight o'clock in the morning up until four o'clock in the afternoon. And then they can provide you with uh, remote assistance. And then you can also drop them an email um, this is their email address, um, itsstudenthelp at ukzn.ac.za. So if you don't have an access to give them a call, you can drop them an email and then they will resolve your query. Mr. Konza has um, explained uh, about the email etiquette, which I believe is very important. When you are dropping um, these guys an email, make sure that your, your, your query is detailed. You explain your issue so that they are able to assist you. So you must not provide an email with uh, some information that is missing. You must ensure that you provide as um, many details as you can. And the student working centers, ICS provides um, student working centers across um, all campuses. And um, the services that are being provided in these um, walk-in centers, they include um, resetting of the student um, active directory services. This include, as I've said, uh, the password reset, enable or disable student account. So if you're having a problem with your student account, please do not hesitate to contact them so that they can resolve that for you. And then they provide the services of uh, student management services, which includes Student Central, how to access it, online payments, access to results, apply for residence, online application, proof of registration, and so on. And they also configure of um, student mobile devices, such as your laptops, cell phone, tablets. And if you want to synchronize your emails to go through your cell phones, you are not sure how to do it, can also approach them and then they will set up for you. So this includes the configuration of all email accounts and wireless connectivity. They also install uh, limited softwares such as the Microsoft Office, my UKZ, UKZN app. I'm going to talk about that as we uh, move on with this presentation. Uh, the Outlook where you are going to set up your email and then the SPSS and the antivirus on your on your on your on your on your, on your laptops, EndNotes, and they also install uh, the Microsoft Microsoft Windows, but only for the NSFAS laptops. So as for those students who are funded by NSFAS, as uh, the semester or as time goes on, you will receive notifications, which are going to instruct you of where you are going to collect those laptops. So once you've collected your laptop, your laptop will be required to install the Microsoft Windows. So you can approach uh, one of these uh, working centers so that they can as assist you in terms of how uh, to install the Microsoft Windows. And then they provide services such, such as troubleshooting, the hardware diagnostics, access controls, uh, authorization to access labs, authorization to access campus, authorization to access um, library, and so on. And then uh, the P counter, the P counter, it's it's a printer, printer counter, 
and you will you you will learn as 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 you are going to be on campus in the next few days that when you go to library or any building on the campus you will not you will see or you will notice a printer a printer counter whereby you will need to insert credits in a form of um in a form of money so that you can be able to print or make copies um, on the uh, library photocopying facilities. And my UK is an app. So as I know that you guys are now tech, tech savvy. So you are familiar with uh, your, your the technology. So the UK is an app is also available on um, Google App Store or iApp Store. So in order for you to be able to download this app, you can go to App Store on your mobile device, search for my UKZN, and then download it. So you'll be prompted to register using your LEN login credentials. You will then be prompted to enter a four-digit PIN to access the application. So after entering your four-digit PIN, you will be sms a verification code to your cell phone number that you supplied on Student Central upon registration. So it's very important that you do not change cell phone numbers. If you happen to change your cell phone number, please inform um, ICS so that they update your details. So you can do this on your Student Central. Even the data that you are going to receive in the upcoming days, you are also going to receive them on the number that you have registered on your student central. So it's very important that you keep uh, the university aware of your cell phone number. So you must not use your brothers or your aunties, your sister's cell phone number, because your data will not go to your current cell phone. It will go directly to your sister or your brother to the number that you use. So it will be difficult for ICS to retrieve those data that have gone through your sister or your brother. So it's, it's, it's the, the responsibility is on you to ensure that the cell phone number that you use is, is the number that belongs to you. So you then need to enter the code that will go through to that number. And then you can reset your forgotten learn password on that app. You can retrieve your student central password. You can view your timetable on, that, uh, on my UKZN app. You can log in a query with ICS. So in this case, if you don't want to drop them an email, you can go to this app and then you can log a query and then they will be able to assist you. You can also access your results, your test results, your quiz results through my UKZN app. And you can log an emergency call to RMS. So for instance, this is quite an advanced app. So if you are working on campus, uh, maybe a little bit late, and then you are unsure of your surroundings or you are suspicious of anything, you can, you can just go to my UKZN app and then you can log a panic a query or a panic button. So they will immediately call you to check whether you are okay or not. If you are not okay, they will ask you to stand wherever you are and then they will send out help. In this case, it will be an RMS official to come and then escort you to your uh, residence or private accommodation that is registered with UKZM. So it's quite an interesting app um, that is trying to ensure that you uh, everything that you need is just in the fingertips of your hand. And as I've just said that you can synch synchronize your emails via your cell phone. So you can choose to synchronize your email to your mobile device or read your email directly via your device. So this could be your cell phone, this could be your tablets and uh, your laptop as well. But um, one thing that I would advise you guys that please be very careful and vigilant when you are sending emails um, using your cell phone. So Mr. Mkons had talked about the email etiquette. So you must be very conscious, you must be aware if you are sending an email back to your lecturer or back to anyone who's helping you in that email, especially when the email came to you in bulk or into, into other classroom um, mates. So if you want to respond back to your lecturer, so you must not copy in everyone. So you must direct your email 
to your lecturer or anyone that have uh, sent you that email. So those are the one uh, characteristics of uh, the email etiquette. And to do so, you can download the Microsoft Outlook on your mobile device app from Google Play Store or the Apple App Store using your mobile device. And to download um, these um, features, which is Microsoft Outlook and, um, and uh, the MyUKZN app, it will not cost you any money. So you just need to have the data, which the university uh, is going to uh, provide you. Or you can visit uh, the ICS Working Center for further assistance if you are not sure how to synchronize your email or how to um, download the My UKZN app. And in addition, um, on campus, uh, for those of you who will be on campus as of next week and so on, um, ICS and also the library, they will be providing free computer literacy training sessions. Uh, that are provided by the ICS and, and also the library. So I would encourage each and every one of you to uh, register for these sessions. They're quite important to teach you the basic computer literacy. Mr. Mkonda talked about um, uh, the Microsoft Word uh, and Excel spreadsheet. So it's crucial that you are familiar with these um, soft skills because you'll be using them as uh, the semester is beginning and so on and beyond. So these sessions will teach you uh, the basics that you need to know about using the computer facilities on campus. We've got computer facilities, uh, lens, and your assignments, you'll be writing them using um, uh, Microsoft Word. And for some of you, uh, who are in, especially in uh, doing accounting, you'll be using most of the time uh, Excel. So you need to familiarize yourself on how to use these um, basic um, computer uh, features. So this is also an introduction to the applications systems that you may need to log on to for further duration of your studies at UK. That's in. As I've stated, as you go on beyond um, your first year of studies to your second year, third year, and for those who are doing the extended curriculum into your fourth years as well. So these um, uh, applications and systems will help you to ensure that you use them well. And we've also have um, a library Every campus, we have five campuses, as I've mentioned, every uh, campus has its own library. And you can access uh, the library as well online using the link that I have put in the slide so that you can get any electronic resources that you may need. You can also um, book um, a time to see a librarian or you can, um, make a booking to uh, use certain textbook that you want to, to use for your assignments, for your essays and so on. So this system is actually a, a user friendly. It's just that you need to learn how to use it. And uh, these ICS student working centers that I've just mentioned, as I've said, they are available on all our five campuses and they are operating from Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. in the morning up until 16.30 uh, in the afternoon. And uh, they are based in these uh, buildings. So if you're in um, PMB, so this is where the working center is situated. If you are at Westville, this is where uh, the working center is situated. And if you are at Howard College, this is where the working center is situated. And also in the other two campuses, but for you, uh, you are not, you will not be based in these other two campuses. So this is where you will get assistance in terms of how to set up all of uh, the other issues that I've mentioned in my previous uh, slides. Furthermore, these are the RMS emergency lines. 
or telephone numbers that you need to keep them on your cell phones. And these numbers, guys, that will also be available at the back of your student card. So if there is any issue that you are having on campus, for instance, you are ex residents and you are feeling sick, the first point of contact is RMS. You call them, but um, tomorrow we'll be having um, another session with the student support services. So they will go into details about how to go to uh, get assistance if you are feeling sick and so on. So I'm just touching this so that you are aware if you're having any issues at rest. First point is you reach out to RMS, you call them and then they will make, uh, they will ensure that you receive assistance as soon as you can. Even if you're in the library, you are being suspic suspicious of any activity, call RMS and then they will come to ensure that any matter is being resolved. And especially for you guys who will be in the library or anywhere on campus, this is my advice that ensure that you keep your belongings very safe. Um, as you are all aware that we actually live in very strange times. So the responsibility is on you to make sure that you keep your belongings very, very safe. And when you are in the library, don't uh, leave your personal belongings unattended. So make, make sure that your bill, your bill, you keep your billing belongings very safe. Although we have cameras, but the cameras will not be everywhere. So that is why I'm actually advising that you must keep your belongings uh, quite safe. Even on uh, around campus, so you must make sure that you keep your stuff very, very safe so that you do not find yourself to be in a situation whereby you find your stuff to be lost and so on. So this um, was it for me from um, the student help. And I would now like to hand over back to uh, Dr. Jerry. Thank you so very much. And um, thank you. Um, back to you, Dr. Jerry. Thank you very much, Mr. Zulu, for the presentation. Um, I'd quickly like to just um, talk about one pertinent issue, which is surrounding the timetable. So I'll be just making a presentation. Um, yes, thank you. So with regards to the timetable, guys, um, there's a number of queries that have come through. Where do I get the timetable? Um, I've got clashes in my timetable. So those are the issues that I want to just address. And in doing so, I just want you the basic tools that I need of so that you can be able to follow. So I'm sharing my screen now. Um, here we go. Okay. So let's start with the idea of creating the, how do you go about creating your timetable? Where do you get your timetable from? The first thing that you need, you need your basic, two basic tools. You need your a blank generic timetable like this, which you can get from the schools or any of the academics can provide you with this timetable. Um, quickly, I would like to just speak about the generic timetable, what it looks like. So this is what your timetable is going to look out like um, throughout your years in the university. This is how the university plans its times, its academic times. So you can see in a day, you've got 10 periods from period one to period 10, okay? And then obviously this is Monday to Friday. Now, each of those periods are 45 minutes periods and with slight breaks in between to allow you to move from one venue to another, okay? I think it's about 15 minutes or 10 minutes to move from one venue to another. So you should know that you've got 10 periods in a day, that is period one up to period 10, and then each of those periods are 45 minutes, okay? So this is what your generic timetable is going to, to look like, your basic timetable, that's what it's going to look like, okay? Everybody should get one of these blank ones. And the next thing that you need, your second tool, when it comes to your timetabling issues is you need the college handbook. Remember um, in the beginning of um, the, um, the, the orientation on Monday, we talked about the, the college handbook and a colleague of mine um, referred to the timetable as the, you know, this is the Bible that you use and hand definitely. So this is the book where everything that you do in the university comes from, okay? So you all need your handbooks on hand when it comes to developing the timetable. Specifically, I need you to, if you have the timetable or those that, I mean, the, those that are going to get the, the handbook, I've put the handbook in the chat, including a, 
a blank time table for you. I think it's on page 64. That's where you need, where you actually have a, it gives you the structure of your degrees, okay? So on page 64 here, you can see, this is your our Bachelor of Commerce General, okay? So this is our BCom General. Um, slightly below that, we have Law, I think. We've got the next one is Bachelor of Commerce Law. That's the degree structure. And then you have got your accounting that follows after that, okay? So this is the degree structure for your accounting, okay? So I just wanted to let you know to be familiar with where you find your, 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 your degree structures in the, in the college handbook. So from round about page um, 64. So let's go back. I'll just use an example of the BCom general, okay? So this is our BCom general. When I mean degree structure, I'm saying that here is where you're going to have all of the modules that you're expected to complete between your first year, your second year, and your third year, okay? Depending on what program that you're in, okay? So your Bachelor of Commerce, for instance, your first year, these are the 10 modules that you do. You need to come out with a total number of credits of 160 credits. And then your second year, you're going to do these, you should be doing about eight modules and your total number is going to be about 128 credits. Your third year, again, is another 128 credits. So your entire credit load for your Bachelor of Commerce degree is 416 credits. If you're doing BCom accounting, it should be around, let's see. Your BCom accounting. There you go, your BCom accounting here, 160, you see that first year. And then second year and third year and your total credits are 448 credits for your degree. And these are the BCom general, BCom accounting, the mainstream ones, okay? So let's go back and look at your BCom general first year, okay? So this is our BCom general and this is at first year. So this year, you are expected in semester one to be taking five modules, accounting, principles of economics, ISTN, management, and quantitative methods, which is mathematics, okay? And then in your second semester, you do accounting again, you do principles of economics, you're going to do ISTN, you're going to do law, commercial law, and then you're going to do statistics, okay? So five modules in the first semester, five modules in the second semester. Each of those modules has got a 16 credit load, okay? Now, what's most important when you're creating your timetable is to actually take note of your code, the code for the code. Every course has got a code. Accounting, the code is ACCT 101. Economics, first semester, principles of economics is known as Econ 101. ISTN uh, for business, first semester is known as ISTN 101. Management 120 is known as MGNT 120. And quantitative methods is known as Maths 134. Okay, so first thing we do, we've got our blank timetable. Secondly, we need our, our college handbook so that we know exactly what are the modules we should be doing in the first semester, which is what I've given you. If you're doing BCom accounting, I mean BCom general, these are the, the modules that you should be doing. If you're doing BCom accounting, the modules that you should be doing are here. Okay, here are the differences you're going to do, stats 130. Okay, so these are the first semester modules you should be doing for BCom accounting. So you need to get to know what modules you're going to be doing in each um, particular semester, okay? Now, now that we know the modules that we're doing and we've got a blank timetable, we go now to do some adventure, which is going online, okay? A second thing that I've noticed is very common amongst us, guys, is that we are not taking time to read. It's important to read around, and that's why they say for your degree, you read towards your degree, okay? So you need to take time to read this information. The university puts out a whole lot of information for you to be able to read, for you to be able to be in the know, don't guess. One of those places is that you need to familiarize yourself with the university website. Again, most of the information that's on the website is to answer your questions and to clear off all of these issues. So go to the university website, under the university website, go to support services, okay? Under support services, when you browse, when you go downwards, you're going to see your student portal there. Click on your student portal. 
And this is specifically where you have all the information to assist you as a student. You want to check your status. You want to study at UKZN. You want to go to what is known as Student Central, okay? Exam timetables, lecture timetables, rack applications, all of the information and the handbook. This is where you get your college handbook again. So you go to the university, generate the main website, and then you go to uh, support services, and then you come and you select your student portal. So this is where all the information for students is going to be available. Now let's go into our lecture timetable. When we click into lecture timetable, it's going to give us all the timetables. Remember University of KwaZulu-Natal has got five campuses. So it gives us information across all of these different campuses, okay? The timetables for these different campuses. So what is important to you is to know which campus you belong at, okay? So that's where your focus should be. Now, the campus that you belong at, for instance, if you belong at Peter Marisberg, you come at Hoover, put your cursor over Peter Marisberg campus, don't click it, just put it over it, and it's going to open another window. On that window, you're going to select semester one modules, okay? Then you have your timetable and venues. When it opens there, you scroll down, and here you see semester one. So you click on to semester one. This is your campus web timetable. So you come into your web timetable. When it opens, you click onto your web timetable. It will open an option called timetable finder and you click onto that. Here is where you have a list of all of the timetables for all of the modules that are happening on the Peter Marisberg campus. Remember, I said I'm on Peter Marisberg, so I selected Peter Marisberg and it gives me all of the modules that are taught in all the venues on the Peter Marisberg campus. Then you apply the tool now, you apply the information that we started with. And the information that we started with was to do what? To one, get a blank timetable. Secondly, is to get your college handbook and to know the modules that you're doing in that particular semester for that particular degree. So we said we are doing BCom General in first semester. If I can just make some space here. Let's see. I just want to bring up again the handbook. So remember, we had said that we are BCom um, students doing our BCom general. And in first semester, these are the modules that we'll take. Semester one, we're going to be taking ACCT uh, 101. We're going to be taking Econ, ISTN, and so on and so forth. So now that we know the modules, we go into our timetable finder that is open there. So the first thing that we'll do is we're going to say, OK, we start with accounting. So here, when you look there, in accordance to um, alphabet, we're going to see Accounting 101. This is the only Accounting 101, okay? Accounting 101, P1A, Accounting 101. We go to the PDF there, the PDF opens, and this is the timetable for Accounting 101 from Monday up until Friday. Now, this timetable is going to tell us all of the activities that go on um, in Accounting 101. What you see here in black are the lectures, okay? What you see here in pink are your tutorials. And it tells you very clearly, these are your tutorials, okay? So what is in pink are the tutorials. What you see in black are the lectures. Now, um, the generic structure of your BCom uh, modules is that you should have four lectures in a week for that particular module. And then you should have some of them also come with tutorials. When I say four lectures, I mean four periods of that particular module, okay? So when you see here, you're going to see your, on Tuesdays, looking at your timetable in the one, two, three, four, five, sixth period, on Tuesday is when you're going to start your first lecture of accounting, okay? So it shows us very clearly here on Monday, there's no lecture. The lectures only start on Tuesday in the sixth period, which is 1220. Now, if you notice, it sits exactly snug into one block, meaning that this only is a period from 1220 to 1220 to uh, 1305, if I'm not mistaken. That is your 50, 45 minutes. So this is one period. Then on Wednesday, do we have accounting? There's nothing. 
On Thursday, do we have accounting? Yes, we have accounting. And the accounting block sits across two periods. So which means we have accounting on Thursday, it's a double period from 8.40 up until 9.35, okay? Then on Friday, do we have accounting? Yes, we have accounting. It sits onto, into one block only. We have our accounting that starts at 7.45, okay? So this shows you now, if we were to count, we'll count one period there, two, three periods, because this is a double period. And then the fourth period is on Friday. So that's how you are going to put, you're going to go back into your timetable now, the blank timetable. And in the blank timetable, we are going to say, okay, on Tuesday, we have accounting. So here on Tuesday, we're going to say, I'm going to have accounting. Okay, just a brief. And then on Wednesday, do we have accounting? No. On Thursday, do we have accounting? Have accounting? Yes. So we go into our timetable again and we say accounting on Thursday. When is it? On Thursday, your accounting is between 8.40 and 9.35. So it's a double period from 8.40, Thursday, 8.40 across there. We're going to have accounting there. And we are going to have accounting there as well. And then we go back and we see, okay, what about Friday? Yes, we have a Friday. We have accounting at what time? It's at 7.45. So you go back and we say 7.45 here. We add accounting, okay? Now, when we go back into the timetable, it shows us something strange. There's this pink, um, there are these pink blocks, okay? Now, these pink blocks basically is our tutorials. And look at this. We've got two pink blocks that are on the same day, Monday. So there's one pink block that starts at 10 past two, it ends at three. There's another pink block that starts at uh, four o'clock and it ends at 4.45, okay? So these are two double periods. Now, the rule is that for each module, you only attend one tutorial per week. Meaning on Monday, you either choose to attend between 10 past two, two, three, or four o'clock to 4.45. You don't attend both of them. So I look at my timetable. I'm in Peter Maritzburg. I have to take a shuttle going down to um, Durban. That's where I live. And the sh last shuttle leaves at two o'clock. Meaning if I, it leaves at, uh, sorry, the last shuttle leaves um, at four o'clock. Meaning that I can take the tutorial that starts at two, ends at three, and then at four o'clock catch the shuttle. Because if I take this one that starts at four, ends at five, then I don't have transport going home. So I prefer to take this one that is at 10 past two. So we go back into the timetable and we say, I have chosen for myself that I will take this tutorial that starts at 10 past two. So here I can say AC, ACC accounting, tat. okay? I think it's, yeah. Yes, so. I have populated for accounting. This is my timetable for accounting for the week. I go back again into, um, I go back again into my, do, 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 do. Sit, yeah, let me just move it, sorry, the screens. So I go back again into the handbook. And when I look at the handbook, I say, okay, accounting I've covered. The next thing that I look at is econ, okay? So if I go, now I know I'm in timetable finder. So all I need to do is go. Oh, so you go back rather than close. So going back. So accounting is covered. The next thing I look for is econ 101. So I scroll down A, B, C, D, E, econ 101. There it is. But the funny thing is that econ, there's econ 101 here, econ 101 R1, econ 101 R2. Hmm, both of them are principles of accounting. Now, this is confusing. What you need to do now is to look at each of them and see how it fits. Now, you can only, this is what we refer to as streams. This is what we refer to as blocks. This also answers the question, I have got a clash. No, you don't have a clash. You have just not created your timetable properly because you've taken a stream that clashes with something else. Now, if you notice for your accounting, accounting 
only has got one stream. There's no other accounting. So this you have to do when it is. You've got no choice. Therefore, you come back into your next module, which is your economics. So let's pick the first stream and see what's in our first stream. Okay, so for economics, our first stream, it says Monday, we've got a lecture at 10, a double lecture between 10 and 11. So we go back into the timetable, double lecture between 10 and 11. So we say econ. Here, econ. We've selected that one. So we're in the first stream on Tuesday. We've got a pink block there, and the pink block means it's a tutorial. So the econ tutorial is on Tuesday at 7.45, okay? So we go back on Tuesday. Oh, 7.45, it's free. So here we have got econ tat. We put it there. We go back again into the, on Wednesday. What happens on Wednesday? Hmm. On Wednesday, there's a lecture, and then there's a tat here. I don't have to do this tat because the rule says you only do one tutorial per week. So I've already accounted for my tutorial period, which is on Tuesday at 7.45, okay? So the only thing that I need to do is the lecture here, and the lecture is at 8.45. So I go back into the timetable on, what day is this again? On Wednesday. So timetable on Wednesday. At what time? At 8.40, Wednesday, 8.40. Here we've got our econ lecture. What's happening on Thursday? On Thursday, we've got a lecture at one o'clock econ single period. So I go back, say, okay, on Thursday, what's happening? One o'clock, my one o'clock is free. So I say econ there, okay? Then I come back and I say, okay, now on Friday, let me see what's going on on Friday. On Friday at two o'clock, I've got another lecture. So I go back into my timetable and I will say Friday, at two o'clock, am I free on Friday at two o'clock? Yes, I'm free. So there I say econ on Friday is free. So I put my econ. Now I've populated my accounting. I've populated my econ. Again, I repeat the process. I go back into the handbook. Not there, I go look for the handbook. That should be the handbook. I go back into the handbook. Again, what's the next one is ISTN. So I go back and I say, okay, ISTN, when is my ISTN? Um, timetable finder, the next module that I'm dealing with is ISTN E. So I look for ISTN, ISTN. Should be here, ISTN 101. When I look ISTN 101 again, there are two streams here. So I pick another stream. Now, remember the way, the reason why most of the times answering the question of clashes, the reason why most of the times you have clashes is because you are picking the same stream for different modules. Chances are you have two modules that are two lectures of these modules that are taking place at this, on the same day at the same time. So the best way to run away from you creating clashes is try and vary rate. So we know that econ, I, I selected um, R1, which was the stream. So ISTN, let me select R2. It's the same being taught, R2 there. So R2, ISTN on Monday, there's nothing. On Tuesday, it's at one o'clock. So I go back into my timetable. Tuesday, one o'clock, ISTN there, ISTN. And on Wednesday, ISTN is when it's at between nine and 10. So on Wednesday, it's a double period. On Wednesday, I say there's ISTN there, ISTN. Wednesday, ISTN there, because it's a double period. Then I go back and I say on Thursday, when ISTN is at 12.20, on Thursday, ISTN is at 12.20. My 12.20 is, is free, ISTN there. And then I go on Friday. No lectures, I have a tutorial at 9.35. So Friday, how is my Friday like? 9.35 is free. Here I've got ISTN. So what we've done for is for economics. We've also done for accounting. We've also done for ISTN. I think you guys are now university students, senior students. There's no need to for me to bore you and repeat the same thing over and over. I think you get the gist of the of, of the issue here. 
So that's in essence how you're going to um, create your, your timetable. Let me just stop sharing that screen and come back here. So that's how your timetable actually works out. So you have to one, get a blank timetable, two, get your college handbook so that you make sure that you're familiar with the modules that you're doing in that particular semester. Please stop, avoid this thing. And it's only normal when you don't know to want to ask a friend, which is okay. But now you're a university student, you need to take charge of your education. So know what modules you're doing. Get the handbook for yourself and know that, oh, when I'm in second year, these are the modules I'll be doing. In third year, these are the modules I'll be doing. In first year, these are the modules that I'm going to be doing, okay? So learn that, then that's how you create. If you happen to find yourself in a situation where you have a clash, you've got a module that, let's say you've got ISTN on, uh, um, at, uh, on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, and then now you're setting up for economics and you find that there's economics also on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. What you do is you go back, just select a different stream and voila, you are fine. So that's how the clashes are actually created. Where can I get the blank timetable? I've actually just put a blank timetable up in the, um, in the chats right now. Um, let me just put it again. But you can get it from a department, anybody, a friend who has been studying, they should be able to get, give you a blank timetable. You can create one for yourself, which is um, not necessary. I think you will make your life unnecessarily difficult there. Okay, so that's the first way that how the timetable actually goes. That's how you create a timetable for yourself. The second way, an easier way, is that your department, normally when you attend your lectures on Monday, the first lectures, your department will tell you, okay, these are when the lecture times are going to be. So all you do is take those lecture times and then you populate them into your, you populate them into your timetable on your own. So I shown you the long way, the actual way that you can do it now without actually waiting for your department or asking somebody. But sometimes departments are also very user friendly. They'll put up, they'll, they create the time, they'll give you the timetable for that particular module. They're, so you can't, let's say you're doing BCom general, you are not going to go and find somebody who from the ISTN department who give you the entire timetable for your BCom general. They'll give you the timetable for ISTN. Somebody else, your other lecturers in maths will give you the timetable for maths and so on and so forth. Um, an example I've just put in here, for those that are doing foundation, we've actually created the timetable for you. So I've actually put in the foundation timetable for the Peter Maritzburg campus. Please, let's be clear. This is for the Peter Maritzburg campus. That's what your entire timetable is going to look like after you've done the populations themselves, okay? Um, at this point, I think I have finished with that, with the timetable, and I'd like to open up the floor for questions because we should be logging off very soon. Um, are there any questions with regards to the timetable? We can take them now. Um, the session is open. Is anybody who's got um, questions? Um, Mrs. Langa, could you help us maybe in uh, moderating the conversation in terms of the questions? There was a hand by uh, Petlego as well. Petlego, you had a question, contribution? No, uh, I was actually saying that if they can find the, the timetable that you sent, they can actually check the one that you were referring to from the table finder, timetable finder, and then they can create it by themselves. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Maybe let's take some questions with regards to um, the timetable now. Uh, I'm just looking through the chat because I think Ms. Langer is still trying to organize the mics. Um, whoever has the timetable, please send it on the WhatsApp group. Okay, this is something I'd like to address. Guys, now that you're in the time you are at the university, you need to be proactive. Don't say, give me, go looking for it. You, we've now shown you how to actually get onto timetables. When you get onto timetables, there's a blank timetable that you can actually get from there as well. And then you can go ahead and creating it, okay? 
So don't sit back and say, give it to me. Go be proactive and look for the information yourself. We've told you where to get it. Please work until getting it. Um, Tabiso? There's a uh, thank you, comment. Mr. Jerry. My contribution is around those that are still trying to register. So I want to advise them that, you know, just because your registration has not gone through yet, it doesn't mean yes. that uh, the university will wait for you. So you need to be proactive, meaning that in those groups that we've created for you, either for your modules or, or also for the FYE, find students that are also in doing the same uh, course as you and find information because you might not have access to Leonard and you might not be able to work with the app as yet, but you need to find links and start attending so that you don't miss out because the university will proceed with or without you. So that's the unfortunate part. However, this is how things go at university. You need to be proactive. You need to access the help from the people that are at your disposal so that you are not left behind. So do not say just because I'm not registered, I'm just gonna sit back and relax. By the time maybe you are registered, maybe after three weeks, maybe it will be a week where you are starting uh, test one. And that's always an issue because a lot of students don't attend and then they find out there's a test and think that something is going to change, but things won't change, things keep moving. So you need to also make sure that although you're not registered, don't make that as an excuse. Uh, don't use that, don't, don't try to be a victim, be proactive and make sure that you are also catching up with everybody else. Thanks, Tabiso. Um, we're going to be closing very soon. So I'd like to take questions urgently. There's one good question that I got. A student asks, where do I actually find the venues? When you go into Timetable Finder, when you actually look at your timetable, I've actually shared the screen. Uh, this is the timetable for ISTN. If you read in the blocks, okay, the information, all the information is actually being given to you. So you're being told it's ISTN, you are in stream two, okay? And when you look further, it says which room you're in came out. So Tuesday, you're going to be attending in came out. On Wednesday, when you look, you're going to be in came out. On Thursday, you're in came out. And then on Friday, the tutorial is also going to be in came out. So just please make sure that you take time to actually read through. When you read, you'll be told you're going to be in DSLT and so on and so forth, different venues, but all of the information is actually provided for you in the timetable itself. So that's how you tell where the venues are. Uh, when registering, I was giving modules, I was given modules. Do I use them for the timetable or use the ones in the handbook? The modules that you were given and the modules that you find in the timetable are exactly the same. So don't worry. How, how do we attend lectures without registering? Okay, so you advise guys to please register um, as soon as you can. Um, if you are still in the process, it would be good to get whatever evidence that you have, move with it. And if you are actually asked that you're not registered, just show whatever evidence to say, look, I'm trying to finalize my registration. Um, hopefully you will be allowed to attend. I can't find modules, entrepreneurship seven, or you are not supposed to be here. This is actually a first year orientation session. So please find the appropriate person to actually assist you with that. If it's module entrepreneurship seven, you are actually supposed to be a very senior student. Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Jerry, I think with this, yes. uh, the student saw Petejo's example. No, oh, those yes. are not your modules. Oh. She was using her modules that she was registered for to show you an example. You're not supposed to be doing those modules. Those are modules from honors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So guys, what it is, is that I've given you the handbook. So with the handbook, now you know the modules. And that's the reason why I didn't want to tell you the modules. I gave you the handbook and I showed you that in first year, these are the modules you should be doing. In second year, these are the modules that you're doing. If you're doing BCom accounting, these are the modules. If you're doing BCom general, these are the modules. So you should be very clear now with what modules you're doing. Um, what happens if you are a transfer student and did half of your modules? Okay, um, what I would actually ask you to do is if you could please direct that question in your mentorship group and your mentorship group will upscale it to your coordinators and then we'll deal with it um, appropriately. I would just like us to deal with the first year issues. 
just the joining in. Otherwise, it's a good question, but please just make sure you push it through your mentor and the mentor will hand it to you. I'm doing my honors. I'm sorry, this is a first year orientation. So um, you should have an appropriate um, orientation for honors. What about FYE students? Now, all first year students are part of the first year experience, which is referred to as FYE. So all first year students should have a mentor. If you don't have a mentor, join into the WhatsApp groups that were spread out, okay, with regards to the different, um, the different degrees, BCom Accounting, BCom General and Foundation or Law. Please make sure you join into those WhatsApp group and you'll be allocated a mentor from there. If I am particular, Sorry, yes? Dr. Jerry, for now, all the mentors are in the groups. So they, that's why we actually- That's the reason why I'm saying them. all of them should just join yes. into the groups, yes. Yes, yes the mentors so everybody are just there. Get, get into the groups and you'll be sorted out from there. Just make sure that you are in a particular group, okay? Please send me the link for the WhatsApp groups. We are going to share the links after this session. If I choose A as a timetable block during registration for the module, can I sort out my timetable with another timetable? Yes, you can, you actually can. So listen, the timetable blocks have got nothing to do with your registration. So don't panic, don't worry, okay? It's just that obviously, if you haven't organized your timetable well, you'll be having these so-called clashes and you know, it can be very frustrating. But otherwise you can create your timetable at any time. Obviously, as soon as possible before the lectures happen, okay? So what happens is that, let me also explain this, is that if you have streams, what normally happens with a stream, let's say, you are in economics and economics has got two streams. What we are basically saying is that the lecture is going to be repeated twice, okay? So for each stream, if you've got four lectures in economics, those four lectures will be repeated again in another stream. So you don't have to attend all of them, otherwise you're going to be um, attending repeat sessions. Does each week have a different timetable? No. So all of the, what you have, when you create a timetable for the week, that is the timetable you will run with until the end of the semester. If I'm registering for BCom General and in the process of switching to BCom Accounting, which qualification will I make a timetable for? You will attend where you are registered until you are confirmed to be moving to a different stream. Otherwise, you can end up missing a lot of work and then your application is for some reason denied. You might end up in a problem. So please, Take yourself where you've registered and make sure that you attend there. When I registered for my modules for BCom General, I chose one module from BCom Law. Will that be an issue? No. So what happens is that you get, if you just go into your timetable, you are expected to actually do law, okay? Commercial law. So that's not a problem. That's actually part of your, your, your time, your, um, your, your timetable the way it's supposed to be. 